Thank you. Uh, this question is for uh, Steve Brantley. Um, the USGS website shows images of the cracks in the Lower East Rift Zone, and the caption references, as you did, the uh, significant horizontal and vertical offsets uh, of the cracks. What's the significance of, of, those, uh, of that offset and those cracks, and is it indicative of a higher potential for future eruptive activity in, in those areas? Well, these uh, ground cracks that are moving apart and new cracks that are appearing and the various offsets, uh, obviously are showing uh, sort of an uh, extreme deformation occurring right at the surface. The overall process is that magma is intruding into the rift zone. It's forcing it apart. It's widening the rift zone. Uh, for example, one of our GPS instruments uh, moved to the northwest um, in the past uh, 24 hours about six inches. And so that's just an indication that uh, the, the rift zone is being forced apart. And so what does this suggest to us about the future? Um, I think clearly it, it, it points to the potential for additional eruptive activity uh, along the lower east rift zone. Thank you. Hi, this question is for Steve. Steve, is there any uh, portion of the East Rift Zone that it appears there's magma is particularly active or moving or, or getting engorged in any way? Is there any way to say? Um, I guess the best way to answer that question is, um, is that we have clear evidence magma really intruding into the lower east rift zone down near the uh, active eruption site. Um, we're not seeing uh, uh, areas of inflation or rapid extension um, in the middle or the upper east rift zone. Not like we're seeing down at the lower east rift zone. And just to clarify, by lower east rift zone, you mean from the Lani down, or am I being too narrow there? Uh, yeah, below uh, Highway 130. Okay, thank you. Of Highway 130 to the current uh, eruption site. Um, Wes, do you want to say something about the um, earthquakes down in the lower east rift zone? About not advancing further than... than uh... Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, to, to uh, add a little bit to Steve's um, answer... You know, the, the magnitude 6.9 uh, created a lot of space in the Middle East Rift. And so there's actually a lot of, of places where magma can move into the Middle East Rift and be stored without actually necessarily um, showing up as extension or inflation. We are not seeing any signs that Pu'u'a'o is, is going to... Um, uh, become active again or anything like that. Um, as, as Steve mentions, we're seeing sort of an absence of signal in the Middle East Rift that goes, all, well, really all the way from the summit of the volcano uh, along the, the East Rift down to um, Leilani Estates, the only place where we're getting really significant uh, earthquake activity um, that can be associated or related to intrusion is down in the East Rift zone uh, to the east of Pune Geothermal Ventures, um, where Highway 132 and kind of the area of uh, Nani uh, Farms Road, or maybe even just a little bit east of that on 132. Uh, earthquakes have stagnated there. The GPS uh, that we have in the area is showing inflation in that particular area. So, you know, all, all of those signs point to pressurization in that area and continued uh, eruption in that zone. Thank you. Hi, my question is for Steve, um, and it also pertains to the East uh, Rift Zone. Steve, you mentioned that there hadn't been a lot of um, lava activity, and that it's only advanced 150 feet. Last night, the booming explosions were particularly loud. Um, they could be heard throughout Lower Kuna, and this continued during the day today. I live in HPP, and... I don't normally hear them during the day, but I've been hearing them the entire time of this call. Um, what would lead to an increase in the 
the volume and the frequency of those booming noises coming from the fissures, given that there's not a lot of lava um, coming from the fissures. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. It's probably best answered by the field geologists. I wish I could tap them into the, into the conference call. Um, there, uh, when Fisher 17 uh, first opened up um, on, uh, it was May 12th, um, recall that there were uh, booming sounds and uh, what I call battery events happening from the upper end of the, of the fissure. And I was uh, flying, uh, doing an overflight uh, with the field crew at the time, and I uh, recall seeing blobs of spatter being shot into the air at least 400 or 500 feet. And each one of those spatter events uh, creates an enormous, enormous boom. In terms, so the lava that's been erupting from uh, Fisher 17 is, is really old, old magma that's been stored in the rift zone for a long time. So it's, it's very uh, viscous, it's thick. And so uh, when that uh, lava moves slowly to the surface, it's perhaps interacting with uh, shallow groundwater in the area to produce these episodic sort of scattering events or small explosions. The other fissures uh, along that whole area <clears throat> are intermittently uh, becoming active or less active and emitting uh, gases, uh, and they have a large, you know, loud gassing signal. 